This is the WHTC Morning News with Gary Stevens and Peg McNichol on 99.7, 1450WHTC and WHTC.com. Welcome back to the WHTC Morning News for this Thursday, June 17th. Thursday mornings, we find out what's going on in downtown Holland. Take a look at travel and tourism in the Tulip City. The segment is Destination Downtown. It's presented by the Windmill Restaurant on 8th Street in downtown Holland. And joining us as she does most Thursday mornings at this time is the Executive Director of the Holland Area Visitors Bureau, Linda Hart. Joining us via the Zoom connection. Linda, good morning. Welcome back to WHTC. Thanks, Gary. I appreciate that. Good. You are glad you are with us. And... Uh, it should be an interesting night tonight. It is the return of the Street Performer Series. It is long awaited, <clears throat> excuse me, long awaited, but certainly uh, certainly uh, going to be well welcomed in our community. Kicks off tonight, absolutely, from 6.30 to 8.30, downtown Holland. Uh, we have 20 street performers, which is awesome news. Uh, it's gonna be all the way from Columbia, all the way down to Pine Avenue. Uh, strategically placed uh, buskers throughout the downtown. 8th Street will be closed uh, from College to River Avenue to allow more social distancing, but that doesn't mean that you no know, uh, uh, pedestrians and visitors and residents can't uh, you know extend beyond that and just be on the sidewalk. But yes, super, super excited. And the thing is, yes, tonight we'll focus on the street performers, but we have had street performers sort of, uh, uh, I wouldn't say casually because they have to get the permits, but uh, it's been more informal over yes. the last uh, few weeks. Uh, um, I like the one, and I wish I would have taken a photo. Uh, they were performing at the little, you know, the little grove over near uh, 8th and Central. Doctors of Jazz. Ooh, <laughs> Doctors of Jazz. I like to call those pop-up street performers, you know, because they're all of a sudden they're there. Who knew? And it was such a great surprise. But yes, we've got some amazing talent um, in the in this area. Absolutely. You know, it's a way for some to break into the entertainment field and perhaps uh, stretch their legs a little bit. And who knows? Uh, they perform with the uh, guitar case open the stereotype the guitar is open and people throw their money down uh who knows maybe in a few years they'll be performing at the at the at the uh, uh, uh park theater or some other venues and there'll be a concert and everybody will be going wild so well, we'll that's, that's exactly right and you know mentioning the the proverbial open uh, guitar case you know they get a small stipend uh because it is uh sponsored uh, the event is sponsored however you know that doesn't mean that um you shouldn't bring a couple pocket change, a couple $1 bills, a couple $5 bills, and, um, you know, uh, tip those performers as you walk by, especially if you're enjoying what they do. So that's a great, uh, great point. Another sign that things are coming back to quote unquote normal, the return of the weekly uh, a reminder, the weekly calendar being issued by your office, uh, the Holland, Depart Holland uh, uh, Convention and Visitors Bureau, Linda Hart. Uh, it's nice to have that back. It is, you know, we, we brought it back in April. It was very much of a soft uh, bring back uh, because, you know, there wasn't a lot going on. We really weren't sure what it was gonna look like. We wanted to make sure that when we did have it out there, it was, uh, it, you know, it was strong and robust. And uh, I sent it to you this morning and you can certainly say it is strong and robust, uh, two sides. One side gives day-to-day uh, -day activities of what's going on in downtown and the greater Holland area. Uh, and the other side talks about attractions and our museums, theaters, things of that, of that sort. So this is the calendar. I did bring one for you so that you could see it. Uh, certainly, if you want to um, if you want to receive this calendar, it's always online on our website at holland.org. You can stop in the office, downtown Holland, and pick one up in our office. Or if you'd like to get one emailed to you weekly, uh, just give us a call or email lucy at holland.org, and we'd be happy to put your email list, um, your email on our list. Now, part of what's on the calendar for events, uh, the Holland Summer Repertory Theater, very busy weekend ahead. It is. Actually, um, it's so great because did I tell you I bought an electric bike? I bought an electric bike. I'm motoring all over town. And so it's a great way to get from here to home. It's going through the Pine Grove. And that's where their stage is set up. Is Oh, uh, Angel got its wings. Uh, so tonight and Friday and Saturday, a night of music with Alex Thompson 
is at the uh, is is taking place at the Pine Grove, and that is the resident music director. So they're doing a variety of songs and stories, um, ranging from drama and comedy. So if you want to enjoy some, <clears throat> probably cause some really good music, uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday from 7:30 to 9:30, tickets are required in advance. And you can get those at the hope.edu website. But they're also still doing a year with Frog and Toad. And that will be tomorrow, Friday, from 1030 to 12, uh, which is a, um, a, a children's story. So certainly a variety of different uh, events. And, you know, there's going to be some weeks where uh, going into the summer that the Repertory Theater will be doing five, six, seven, uh, seven performances each week. So uh, good calendar to have to keep you reminded. Yeah, they're keeping everybody busy. Collin Park, of course, has been busy this past Tuesday. was the first uh, American Legion concert of the season. And on uh, Saturday, it's going to be the Juneteenth Festival from 4 to 8 p.m. Yeah, absolutely. The Freedom Festival, which is, uh, you know, was brought to you by I Am Academy, uh, really focusing on Black youth and um, bringing them. So they'll have learning, food, a freedom market uh, from small business owners, um, as well as in the evening, later in the evening, they're doing a celebration of the Black graduates with a lot of their writings and artwork. So um, certainly something to celebrate there as well. I do want to mention on Friday, the summer concert series is going to take place in the band shell, very much like uh, what we do on Tuesdays at the uh, free concert. Uh, but this is Project 90, which is kind of cool. It's a 90s rock tribute band. So, you know, you're going to get a variety of different music depending on where downtown Holland you go. Two more things I want to touch base with you on, Linda Hart. First of all, a question we were posed on Talk of the Town earlier this week, wondering about the fireworks in downtown Allen. It's, an, it's a no-go again this year, right? It is a no-go. Um, we have not officially heard it's a no-go. Um, what I do believe is that they're trying to figure out another date that they can do the fireworks. Um, I am, but I have not heard anything. And so I'm guessing at this late game in the, um, of the date, it's a, it's a no-go. And finally, uh, Linda, of course, is also very much instrumental with uh, not only the Holland and Bloom effort, but also the Holland Oz Project. It was a week ago that the Oz Project uh, book was presented and displayed at uh, Centennial Park. And uh, Peg and I had a chance to uh, visit the area on a Monday, Monday afternoon, and yet it was busy. There were yeah. visitors there, not just locals. Some came from some distance, and they were touring the area, and they didn't realize that they had a big book like this. And uh, we, you know, we talked it up a little bit, but the thing is, though, Linda, and then the thing that people will be more aware of, especially by this time next year after we've had one tulip time, full tulip time with people seeing the exhibit is that people will be aware of Al Frank Baum's experiences and his background in this area and uh, the display, be it the book now, and of course the statues year round certainly will help. Yeah, I did. Um, Pig sent me that article. It was, it was great. So thanks for um, spending some time over there and sending us a little love. It is, it does look great. Uh, you know, you know, the parks department does such an amazing job trying to get that, uh, get that book ready, get it out. Uh, there's a lot of variables in, um, in preparing it and in, in, in coordinating it. And actually, uh, Jamie Scott, Allison Jeske from Hope College, Jamie Scott being from the city, and then myself are doing a presentation, perhaps on Tuesday, uh, about the book and the statue. So it's great that it gets the um, at the, uh, the acknowledgement that it does, we still get people asking about bricks. We still get asking people, why do you have this in your, um, in your community? So spreading the story and um, sharing, the, sharing the news is always good. You mentioned the presentation. Is that open to the public or is it just a private presentation? And I'm sorry, it's a private presentation. It is for HASP um, members only. So, you know, let's be 55 and over and want to be part of HASP. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm just kind of wondering, you know, I had that uh, uh, question brought up and I just want to make sure that uh, we're not, you know, we're not letting something pass by. <laughs> but say. you know what? That's a great opportunity, though, to do something like that for, for anybody who really wants to learn more about it. Put that bug in my ear, Gary. That's what you did. I've been putting bugs in your ear for the last few weeks about some <laughs> ideas for uh, future events. Hopefully you're writing them down. Linda Hart from the Holland Area Visitors Bureau. Thank you very much for joining us today on WHTC's uh, uh, talk uh, morning news and love we'll destination downtown with you next to, to uh, next Thursday morning.
Okay, thanks, Gary. See you. Thank, Bye-bye. Thank you very much, Linda Hart. On 99.7 and 1450 WHTC, Destination Downtown has been a service of the Windmill Restaurant.